Uh, that kind of worked. Welcome to the new setup, ISO buddies. This is how to live. Let me just tell you. Um, if at any point my chair collapses and I'm on the floor and you just see my feet, uh, I put the casters on this chair last night. So far, it's working out pretty well. Um, so I can wheel it around because it's like an 80 pound chair. Um, and I'm like a 280 pound dude. So it's a lot of work for these casters to put out. So they're on bare concrete. Should be all right. Um, and I'm very well padded. What are we talking about? Norwegian Blues. We got Green Jedi Monkey and Vika Bubbles who have become super fans already. Someday we'll work out the super tip situation. Um, let's see. We have a special treat today. So we have made an omelet for the dairy cows. <laughs> it was going to be a Chicago style hot dog, but I'm still, I want to try to research the effects of vinegar on isopods because a lot of the stuff has vinegar in it. And I don't really want to do that to them. And they are not the superest. You guys are the superest. They're not, um, I know vinegar doesn't have a good effect with calcium stuff generally. So I don't want them to ingest something that's going to harm them because I know they'll eat it because they're stupid. Um, let's give you guys a quick tour of the new facility. This is all brought to you by my one Patreon subscriber. No, I'm kidding. Um, this chair has been in storage because I won't let my wife sit on it um, because she ruined my chair. So this chair has been in storage for like three years. It's the most comfortable chair ever. And I love it. So this is where my isopods are. This is my new Zen area, or most of my isopods, I should say. This is where my crusted geckos in his little greenhouse. We're going to grow out some plants. This is the new blue pigeons from, oh, sh I wasn't supposed to show you that. Uh, but this is my blue pigeons from, um, from Kyle, Kyle Bunch. And some more isopods. And the ants are right here. And my fish. And my special isopods and some roach bins and underneath that my original giant canyon build um that was the original original og vivarium that i built that i'm going to show before i break it down <laughs> and destroy it let's see if we can't put that camera somewhere else so part of the new setup guys we're still getting used to it and i just minimized you because i don't have a desk for this <laughs> it's going really good so far man is god welcome to the show we are going to put a ceiling set up for the ants. The ants are going to get a thing where they come up, but that's neither here nor there yet. Um, I put it together. This branch apparatus here is birch, birch branches. This is going to hang like so with those glass, like, um, you know, those little, they look like Christmas ornaments, but they're for like air plants. We're going to get a couple of those, maybe half a dozen and hang them with different foodstuffs or different resources for the ants. So they'll be able to come up a piece of twine. This will hang from the ceiling by fishing line that has Fluon on it, which Fluon is basically Teflon. Um, it's an ant barrier. So we've already tested the, the fishing line with the Fluon is impenetrable. Without the Fluon, it's a clumsy ladder. So anyway, we are going to talk old school ice pods tonight. Uh, I just was so excited to show you guys around. The original... The original, original ISO buddy with all my Ophi Spider-Verse stickers, the originals. There's a limited edition up there, gold foil, just like the Charizard that you wanted so bad when you were a kid um, or that I want now. So let's see. Let me see. That's fine. We're going to leave the camera there. Maybe we'll see an animal move. Luke, welcome to the show. Uh, hey. Thanks for I having me. Read your last name, so it's Luke Grismar. We're gonna call you Grismar. Okay, um, I'll roll with it. That's that's a cool last name. Let's do it. <laughs> what is it actually? It's a uh, Gazellus. Gazellus. Uh, Gazellus. Yeah, I don't know, man. Grismar. I, I, I like it. Grismar's pretty it. dope. I, it is, I, so I'm good at nicknaming people, so that's way better than most. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> uh, Detrivores love birch. Well, I'll have to give some to millipedes. I have a lot of access to birch, so I'll have to try that out. Um, so yeah, I know you keep a lot of stuff. So let me get, let me give my audience from you a quick, like a resume. Like what's your, what makes you an interesting guest besides breeding isopods? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm an interesting guest or anything, but, um, <laughs> obviously I love isopods. Um, got into it a couple years ago. I remember I just bought the, the one thing that really sold me on them was the whole bioactive thing. And um, I remember the one moment I was like, I want a, sh a bunch of these things. 
Um, and I got in contact with Brandy from our uh, Testa Grax. I mean, you might know her. Um, yeah, awesome Brandy's person. been on the show. She's amazing. Yes, Brandy is so freaking cool. Um, and yeah, I was like, what's the most amount of um, powder oranges you could give me? And she was like, 2,000. I was like, cool, let's do it. So <laughs> I got, got 2,000 powder oranges and I just kind of threw them in all my reptile tanks. And uh, the ice pot thing kind of just went up from there when I found out, oh yeah, these things are pretty freaking cool. They come in a lot of different colors and sizes. Let's roll with it. But um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't remember like my origin story or where I found out about it, but it was a bioactive thing. I was looking at, I think, um, dart frogs online. And oh, yeah, I started okay. to see bioactive everywhere. And I was like, oh, what's this about? And so I started yeah, looking right? into it. That really interested me, the concept. Yeah, same here. Exactly. Yeah. And then I think I started seeing like powders and whatever else because they didn't use anything like not many people really used uh, anything fancy for bioactive. Right. So I was like, well, I have roly polies. Like, let's see if we can do that because I had my crusty. Um, I, my nephew's got a, a turtle and, um, a leopard gecko who loves to eat these ice pods. Um, but yeah, so I just started picking them out of my yard and then I started eBaying, like I started checking eBay and I was yeah. like, oh my God, look at all this stuff. And then I met some great people. I started reaching out to other people online and here we are. Yeah. I mean, that's, what's really nice too. I mean, it's like, I feel like it's such like a ingrained community. I mean, you meet so many people that are into it and like everybody's like kind of like oh yeah dude you're nice about us too hell yeah we should be friends <laughs> and it's like kind of yeah. from there. so i, I like feel like i supply people are the best people out of all the hobbies that i've met people that's what i'm saying like i used to be into the tarantula no offense to tarantula people out there i love tarantulas you know it's my gateway invert but uh the isopod community definitely kind of i feel like they got a little bit more of that camaraderie and not as much of like oh you're doing this wrong can't do that blah 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 so i don't know they're chill chill guys for sure they are so relaxed and so chill. Like there's been very minimal drama in this hobby since I got yeah. into it. And yeah, of course I'm here. the magnet for that stuff. So of course it, you know, <laughs> I've, I've had my share, but um, sure. I haven't taken it to that next level. Like I would in another community, like dart frog yeah. people. I go at dart frog people because they suck. Oh, I can um, only imagine. I mean, uh, they are, if you have a, a rookie question, they are the worst to you. Yeah. Um, let's get back. Let's get back on the track. We're already way off because sure. of me. So, Wally's here. What's up, Wally? Whoa. So, those of you who have been watching the show may know Luke from um, the, the Animal Island Pet Shop in Midlothian. Right? Did I say that right? You did, yes. Okay. Oh, man. I always misname everything. So, um, that was our highest rated show as far as views to date. That was our best performing episode. Um, I had a blast. Uh, yeah, it was just a great time. Um, we were showing off your isopods there. Uh, cause that was, is that the first store you started selling at? Yeah. Um, and it worked out too, because, um, I, I was literally working at Animal Island at that time. Um, I still kind of come in when I'm needed, but I'm over at, uh, I'm working at Brookfield Zoo now. That's, you know, there. Um, but yeah, since I was working there, I was like, Hey Jason, um, we should start selling these. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. So that was pretty much the first place I really kind of started selling them all so and i still do i mean i mean i was okay. shocked when i got in there and i saw the um it was after i got into ice pods and i saw the selection that they had i was like holy cow like i, I you know i picked up a couple of uh, packs right there so um i was shocked at the selection yeah. the prices are really fair yeah i mean it, i feel like the reason it works out because first and foremost i mean i don't consider myself you know like necessarily like a businessman or anything i mean i'm just a hobbyist that likes isopods and it works out that like i also worked at a pet store so like okay yeah. i have isopods here jason take them and you know usually he does a pretty good job of trying to sell them at a you know a reasonable rate too so kudos to him for that so. give me two seconds keep talking i was gonna promote that you're a zookeeper but it occurred to me that we've had a guy who owns a zoo on here twice and those are two of my worst performing episodes and i didn't want to ruin it for you like I feel awful. If you're watching this now and you haven't watched Drew's videos from the Learning Zoo in Texas, go watch it right after this. Stay up till two in the morning, okay? Great episodes. Crying out, the poor guy's got 34 views per episode or something. It's awful. And he was one of the best. Um, yeah, you work at Brookfield Zoo, right? I do, yes. I um, I don't <laughs> I obviously don't own it or anything. I just, just got hired out as a seasonal keeper. So kind of the bottom of the barrel, but... Bottom of the barrel. Get out of here. Oh, I just lost my <laughs> camera. I just lost my camera on our pods, which I'm going to bring in here. 
Oh no. <laughs> uh, let's see. I just kicked it out of the way again, like I knew I would. And sorry. So yeah, tell us more about Luke. Yeah, um, I don't. I'm not sure what else there is to say. Um, I love pods, um, reptiles, all kind of animals. I mean, kind of how it always has been. Um, they love you, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm sure they do. I mean. I actually, I'm pretty sure most of the stuff that I work with kind of hates my guts, but you know, that's how it is working with animals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. Like, you're like, you're annoying, bro. You're annoying me. What's your deal? Leave me alone. Just feed me and go away. <laughs> Freaking kill you. What but, is going um, on? All right. I got to kick this out because I got to get back in here with this. I, this happens every time. Oh, no. Okay. Every I time know. I try to do something fun, it's it sucks. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> So Wally's here to see the um, – Wally showed up just to see the ice pods eat a Chicago-style dog, and I have to tell him it's not. It's not happening. No. Yeah, see if I can bubbles mean, nose. The two episodes were very good. Yeah, yeah. I'm the worst. It would have been cool to see them eat that hot dog, not going to lie, but I totally understand the uh, the caution there. Because when you first told me that, I was just like, uh, I mean, yeah, but – I don't know if that would be safe, I'm assuming, but... <laughs> I mean, they're dairy cows. They'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty indestructible, so it's worse. I mean, they could probably eat, like, you know, a nuclear warhead and be fine, but, you know... Here we see, right? They're basically made to... Oh, geez, he just popped right in this. All right, let's see. Let's pull him out. Okay, that's a good shot of my keyboard, right, everybody? All right, <laughs> let's see. Oh, now what? Dang it. All right. <laughs> so what would you say? We're going to get back to basics. What are, I want to talk about five things you wish you knew when you started isopods. Like okay. five little tips you wish you had when you started isopods. Well, I could think of at least three main ones off the top of my head. And in yeah. hindsight, they're so obvious. Um, the first one is um, I wish I knew the whole thing about the moisture gradients um i made the mistake of when i first started isopods of i was like okay they're isopods i know they're crustaceans they need it you know pretty moist let's just oh. spray the crap out of the enclosure um <laughs> and yeah some, and as you guys know some isopods i would say most of them kind of prefer to have you know obviously they need that moisture but they also like a dry side and then sometimes if they don't get that dry side they don't do too well and uh i'm not gonna lie i have had some uh slightly pricier ones kind of go downhill <laughs> when I didn't know that back when I was getting oh, into like God. my portfolios. Um, Cause yeah, those ones, they don't, they really they don't care for that. Guy. Yeah. So that's how I lost my, you know, first Hoffman Seggies, my uh, Ornatus, but um, oh, God. yeah, but Hey, it wasn't, um, it wasn't like, you know, any Cuberus or Merlinella or anything. So it could have been worse. Um, happened here now? So, yeah, that's definitely one of the uh, best tips I could say. <laughs> Don't um, make sure you're on top of that gradient because they uh, they definitely do need it. Going along with that, um, I also wish that I knew not to overfeed them. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, when I first started, I was the kind of person to be like, let's just throw a bunch of fish flakes in here. You know, they'll eat fish flakes. They're fine. They're isopods. They eat poop. You know, they'll be fine. Mold. Yeah. Yeah. Mold. Yeah, so that's the one that happens. And then, you know, you go in there a week later and you're like, oh, uh, what? <laughs> I should probably take this out. This is disgusting. Um, and then besides mold, you get the fungus gnats. And the fungus gnats are what almost caused my uh, girlfriend at the time to break up with me. They were so bad. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was. It, I remember one point you would like walk in my basement and just like you see them flying around and you go to the ice of hot tubs. And uh, uh, the, girlfriend, that the girlfriend I used to have almost broke up with me over that. So good, yeah, man. She was on her way out anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she, she left me for a different reason. It's all good. If she's watching this. What were you thinking? He's a catch. <laughs> what were you thinking? Yeah. So yeah. stupid. Yeah. Whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. All right. But, um, I'm try this the last time. I don't know what's happening with this phone, but yeah, okay. I mean, hopefully that works. <laughs> Guys, I made an omelet. For my pods. Oh, look at them! They're 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 going at it. Oh yeah, I wasn't worried about them uh, finding it eventually, right? 
Perfect. Let's see. I'm going to get a plate under here. Let's see if that'll work a little better. But, you know, I mean, case in point, better. guys, um, you give them an omelet like this, you, you don't do that once a week. <laughs> and you don't leave leftovers because that's how you get fruit flies. So, case in point. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to put them large, and then let's see what we can do. Oh, that's not it. Is that going to work? That's going to work. There we go. Cool. I like it. Nice and awesome. Nice and so we're going to see them take this omelet down. So this is one egg, um, vegan mozzarella, non-dairy. Are you getting feedback? Talk again. Are you getting feedback from me at all? A little bit. But um, if you're not getting it's nothing significant. So, All right, guys, let me know if it becomes a problem. Yeah. So it shouldn't, but yeah, I think it'll be good. Um, sorry, all these stupid technical issues that I have every stupid time. Uh, <laughs> I thought I ironed these out. Uh, there's some bacon bits in there, and also the egg shell is in there. So <laughs> everything a growing pod needs. Yeah, all the basics. Okay. So, you know, they're devouring that thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. No, see, I'm going to keep an eye on this and I'm not going to just leave this whole egg in there, even though there's probably 1,200 dairy cow in here. See, and the nice thing with dairy cows is usually they're pretty good about finishing everything. Um, yes. Up here, throw something like that. And with, you know, it's like, I don't know, some duckies or something, you know, that's, that's just. It'd be there yeah, forever. But yeah. <laughs> but giving yeah. away some duckies this weekend or next weekend. Yeah. To Ooh. a friend of the show. So he was going to buy them. I feel bad. He was going to buy them at the show. And I was like, I'm just going to give you a dozen. Don't worry about it. Dude, that, see, that's awesome. That's awesome. That is, hey, case in point, the camaraderie of the pod community. That's what I like to see. Yeah. You know? And it's, uh, you know, it branches out. So if, you, if you're if you based in pods, you're going to be, you're going to be just tearing it up. You're going to be having great relationships, great friends. Yeah, absolutely. So what do we have? We got moisture gradient. We had not overfeeding. Yes. Um. Also, uh, vent holes. Vent holes are the big one, um, quite literally. Uh, I have made my vent holes uh, too big in the past, and I have had uh, a lot of escapes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to say we've all been there, because I'm sure we all haven't. But if you've been there, you know it can kind of suck when your dwarf whites get out, and then they invade all your other colonies, and then it's uh, they start out competing them, and you have to kind of start over from scratch um <laughs> yeah your room just full of pods just yeah. like leaving a sponge in the corner yeah um conversely you know it also kind of sucks when like one day you're like wait why are these jupiters not breeding and then one day you find baby jupiters in another pod's bin i'm like oh they've been escaping this whole time that sucks <laughs> yeah that's my magic potions like i was worried my magic potions weren't doing good and then they got to one bin and then they got into a bin like 10 feet away and three, <laughs> three shelves up. So they're like on the bottom shelf of the original rack, this rack here, they were on the bottom shelf and they were three shelves up and like two bins over in a bin. Dude, I don't get ridiculous thing ever. I don't get how they're able to move around so fast, like climb up. It's a, it amazes me every time. It's yeah. Don't. I don't understand it. Yeah. Well, I guess they're got spiders powers or something. I don't know. <laughs> But um, so we got moisture, food, vent holes. Um, I guess number four could be leaf litter. Um, never ever skimp on your leaf litter. It's like one, at least from what I found out, it's probably one of the most important parts of any, you know. That's the pump. thing I don't think you can overdo is leaf litter. Yeah, you really can't. I mean, it's the foundation. That and substrate really, which mm -hmm. I guess – Maybe this is a little bit of a cop out. Maybe it's cheating, but I'll say substrates number five. Um, substrate and leaf litter are like the f foundations. Like if you just and and I've had experience doing this. If you just put your isopods on coconut fiber and just give them a protein source, they're not going to do well as compared to you put them on a quality substrate mixed with like a lot of nutrients that they could use to grow. Mixed with yeah, like, you know yeah. leaf litter. Um, I mean, they'll live. You hear stories all the time of people that that's all they do. Yeah, they'll live. I can't read a single comment because the phone thing's so far away now. Crunchy artificial flavor, artificial colored bacon. Wally, they're <laughs> going to keep you out of Wisconsin if they find out you put that on the internet. 
<laughs> I got banned from Facebook. You're going to get banned from Wisconsin. It's going to be sad. Oh, man, you got banned from Facebook, too. <laughs> I, I don't get to go back till April 1st. So, oh. um, yeah. This I made a joke about been... burning down two taco spots in town that suck. And they clearly didn't think it was a joke. Was okay, like, just an aside, I'm pretty sure I seen that one review that you wrote. <laughs> it was about yeah. what was that place called? I lost it, man. That was the funniest <laughs> thing I ever read. But uh, hey, at least now I know where to try out that taco place, whatever it was called. <laughs> Burrito Loco. If you ever go Burrito to Burrito Loco, Loco yes. Juliet. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> uh, funniest thing I've ever seen, man. It was horrible oh. meat. The cheese was all in one clump at the bottom. It was wrapped like they just kind of flopped it. They didn't wrap it. So when you picked it up, it just like fell apart. I literally spooned everything out of the burrito and put it into my own taco shells. I was so, and the whole time just MF in the whole thing. My daughter's like, those are bad words, daddy. I'm like, yeah, get over it. Yeah. Um, you gotta do what you gotta do. Wouldn't have thought to feed what to your pods, Jedi monkey. What did you feed? Oh, bacon bits. Yeah, I've um, I can say I've never oh. fed bacon bits to my pod, so you know this is a learning experience for me too right now. <laughs> I have fed so many experimental weird things. So um, things I wish I had known is not to buy cheap dried fish. So I had a, I'd lost a colony and a half basically due to bacterial outbreak that happened because of the dried fish. Oh. So um, the bacteria oh. that went on it turned bright red, like Crayola red. And the dead pods were basically their insides were Crayola red, like their, their Ooh. bellies. So um, all my milk backs, all kinds of stuff. So um, what else did I lose from that? I don't remember, but I lost uh, because I just threw those, threw them around and the milk backs, I keep my lavis pretty moist. So I think that's what caused the bacteria to just go crazy. So luckily, I don't know if the, the dairy cows maybe just ate them fast enough that they didn't have a problem. Or they're just Look at these guys. Quality. <laughs> they are indestructible. Or I might have lost a thousand and didn't even notice. Uh, <laughs> look yeah, at these guys cool. just killing it. Man, they're they're eating good tonight. Jeez. I definitely have to say substrate. Um I was getting crap from people when I first started putting pictures up or sharing pictures because it didn't look like I had any leaves, but I crush leaves. Yeah. Like pounds of leaves into my substrate itself. So it's already there. Go ahead. Um because I like the ease of keeping some of them, but I'm going to start turning a lot of these bins into um, show enclosures. That's why I didn't want anybody to see the blue pigeons. That's a, like a spoiler. So if you're watching this, that was a spoiler for April. We're going to have a contest. We're going to do a, our own little like ice bucket challenge, only it's not for charity. It's just for the good of your isopods and your hobby. Um, what's the weirdest thing you've ever fed your isopods? The weirdest thing I've ever fed them, you know, I feel like I don't really break from the norm that much on um, the sometimes like if I have like extra random like protein stuff lying around, um, I'll just throw that in. But um, I'm trying to think, I feel like it's not even that weird. One time I tried those, um, they literally sell them, they market it as isopod food. It's like those iso peepers things where it's really just like fish eyeballs. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know who what I'm talking about. Those? I don't remember who does those. There's ISO, uh, there's the shrimp. They have shrimp. They have peas, ISO greens. Yeah, it's um, um, ISO peepers are like, I think they're cod eyeballs. Yes, they were cod eyeballs. And then they got the uh, ISO grub, which is just the uh, silver sides or something. Um, but uh, I did try those once and they definitely did seem to like them. Um, but that was a while ago too. So I didn't have nearly as many, but I had a lot of like the Levis and, you know, the scabers and seemed to be a hit with everybody. Um, <laughs> but you just got called, you just got called isopod Skrillex. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't help it. I'm emo. All right. I never grew out of my face. <laughs> okay, That's worth the feedback. But, um, <laughs> it's about to grow, like, that's so cool. Um, I feed mine weird stuff all the time. Like uh, a lot yeah, of time I mean, listeners really. will know, like uh, my toenails, toenail clippings. Did, okay, um, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Did they did they eat your toenails? Did they eat that stuff? Uh, it was in. So I had little dishes that I had um, made out of uh, Sculpey, and so or air dry clay basically. And so I put them into the dairy cow bin, this very bin, and it was empty. So I don't I, like I watched them go in and get them and be there for 
little bit. And then the next day it was empty. So I don't know if they ate them or took them off. I didn't sift through the bin. Like this is a 58 quart. This is a 58 quart tub that they're in. So this is huge. But um, yeah, but yeah, the toenails were gone. Oh my um, God. Once in a while, I'll give them uh, all the isopods. I'll give them a little dish of uh, Himalayan sea salts because uh, they're known one of the properties they have for your garden and for the soils that they are in is they process sodium out of the soil. They process salt out of the soil that would be toxic to plants and other animal life. So um, that's one of their like functions. So uh, I started doing it with my milk backs because they were like my test species, <laughs> which I don't know why, because I loved them. And now I, I don't have a single one again. Um, um, I need to do another test bin. I need to set it up maybe with like two dozen dairy cows here and see. Um, I, I, yeah, I do all kinds of weird experiments. Peanut butter. They didn't care for peanut butter at all. Yeah. Um, I was hoping they would as a protein source because I have peanut butter powder that I got from somebody. Okay. Um, and I thought that would be good for my ants, but they don't, man, they don't like it at all. Um, they can see me. They're trying, the ants are trying to get to me right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, but they, I mean, they'll eat anything. It's not that big a deal. Like you said, I think it's just a matter of keeping that good substrate, keeping that good leaf litter, um, hoarding leaves like a maniac when you're out the rotted wood. The white rot oh, is getting what? Yes, that's the other one too. They love that. A pet egg? They do still make pet eggs. Um, I my wife has one somewhere, and I was going to use it and feed the isopods the shavings. I know they would eat that. I know for sure they would eat that. <laughs> Nanette is repeating, "Go to my happy place." <laughs> the topic of toenails. Nobody likes to eat toenails. Uh, I don't know. Man. I think I'm gonna try the toenail thing because that's that's like the funniest thing I've ever heard. Oh, uh, Permian Exotic says that he emptied a pet egg into a bin of powders, and he's a Texas football coach, so his pet egg is probably like a belt sander. <laughs> Isopods love fingernails. See, Vika Bubbles did it too. Freeze dried beef liver dog treats. I was gonna get those today. Actually, I, I stopped myself. I just got more fish. I'm weird. I like to see the little skeletons like the next day. It is pretty cool. Like, <laughs> like yeah. there's a graveyard in this bin now. Yeah. So um, I'm surprised that that almost everyone that gets into this at some point kind of turns into a breeder or, or thinks about it at least seriously. Like, oh my gosh, these are going for this much money. I have, <laughs> I have 500 orange koi scaver. They're going for $30 a dozen. Like, do the math and it's like well yeah, yeah good luck selling them all like you might sell them here and there but you're not going to sell them all at once yeah um and that, that's a good point because i feel and like that's part of it though like i feel like once you get colonies and like it starts with the simple ones like dairy cows i mean you know how fast they breed obviously like it gets yeah. to that point where you like i have so many of these like oh i could probably sell these and make some money so i feel like at one point everybody does kind of get into that mindset um, and you know, some people really do try to go like all out with them and, you know, more power to them. I mean, obviously we need that, but, um, yeah, at one point I, I was kind of in that mindset too. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be the next ice spot businessman. Uh, obviously that's not working <laughs> out. Um, and that's okay. Um, and that's, that honestly is okay. You know, at this point, like I said, I consider myself more of a hobbyist than anything. You know, I just like going down in my basement, looking at all my pods, just seeing if the, I got more babies than last time. And just, you know, put on some music, you know, put yeah. on some electric or metal or whatever the fuck, <laughs> whatever the heck, excuse me. There and, you go. Uh, Almost. Yes, PG-13. PG hey, I, I didn't do it. I didn't slip. So we're good. We're good. These young kids are mouthy. You got to go back and watch the Amy Castle's video. She dropped like 13 F-bombs in a minute and a half. It's like, oh, well. settle down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, usually I'm not that bad, but, you know, whatever. Um, But, yeah, no, Um. Like I said, I just get a kick out of just seeing what my colonies are doing more than anything. And that's kind of what it is. Um, it's nice, though. It's nice, though, that if I ever do want more pods, there's usually always people out there that I could uh, trade for them now, too. And that's another nice thing about the hobby. Everyone's always like, yeah, Yo, let's make some trades. And it works out for everyone, then. So I just did a trade to kind of restock. So um, and that was the first trade in a while. Um, I sold some bulk isopods to uh, Ophi Spider-Verse. <laughs> so expand his 
his collection and I needed money. So he basically did it to help me out. So um, it worked out. I think in pounds, he made out a, a good deal in sheer poundage of I suppose. That about so you, crazy. That's awesome. I don't really count. I just start like shaking until I think it's enough. And then it's like, yeah, yeah, it looks really probably good. looks good. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a thousand, right? Yeah. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Count a thousand? Come on. Who's, who's going to do that? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm sure I, people do, but I don't. <laughs> I did it for white, white dwarfs. And I was you ready did? to lose my mind. I was ready to cancel the trade. I was like, forget it. Forget it. I'm not doing this. Um, so I just started scooping them everywhere. I was like, forget yeah. it. It, it could be 5,000. I don't know. That's, I didn't care. That's, it was just like, yeah. here they go. Especially for dwarfs, man. I mean, like when I've done that in the past too, I'm just like, eh, whatever. This is probably at least a thousand. You're good. <laughs> right? All right. So let's put you on the spot. Oh boy. Most overrated isopod. <laughs> Most overrated. There's probably a lot um, that I would consider Join the overrated. Brotherhood. Come to the dark side. Join my brotherhood. <laughs> I am not the biggest fan of a lot of Kubaris. I'm not going to lie. Um, rubber duckies are definitely, I mean, they're cool and all. What? They suck. They okay. Suck. Let me tell you something kind of funny. Um, I had, I had a buddy of mine that, uh, you know, he didn't really know pods and I was just kind of just showing him mine. And I was like, you know, he liked a lot of the scabers and stuff I was showing him more than anything. I'm like, okay, yeah, you got good taste. Because I, I love scabers. Like, I think it's so freaking cool, the colors they come in. And then I was like, all right, I got these. You know, they're actually kind of expensive. They call them rubber duckies. And then he looks at him. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, everyone really likes these for some reason. He's like, dude, they look like poop with corn in it. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, I could kind of see it. So now me and him, just whenever he talks about it, he calls them poop corns. I'm like, <laughs> I, yeah, I, gotta, I think you uh, just changed the game for me. Um, I <laughs> I enjoy mine. I appreciate them. But I, I'm i glad they were a gift because I would have never paid that much in the first place. Yeah. Especially hearing all the stories. Like, you never see them. I have mine set up in a setup that I'm going to film in a little while. Uh, next month, we're going to do a series uh, of little short videos. But it's designed so you can see them easier. Um, inspired by Ant Farms, actually. Um, and I still, I never see them. And it's like, why? They're still going for like a couple hundred bucks for a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the price is still definitely up there. Um, and like you were saying, you know, there, and, and I feel like that's a problem with the Kubaris in general for the most part. Um, besides, you know, like Panda Kings or, you know, you got so many that it's whatever, but they're reclusive for sure. Like, all the all my other expensive Kubaris, like you know the cappuccinos, the Jupiters, it's the same way. I mean, they just kind of hide, and they're slow breeding. Um, yeah. I like stuff that breeds fast because uh, it's fun to see big colonies. Um, it is fun to see big colonies. I do want to when cappuccinos come down. I do want to get some cappuccinos, regardless of whether they hide or not. Like, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, man. they are gorgeous species, man. They're absolutely gorgeous, but like, yeah. I like them as a as a Christian old old man. The cross on their back is just the coolest thing to me. I just think yeah. it's so neat. No, um, honestly, same. I like the cross. It is pretty nice. I will say bioactivity. I can't really read the comments, but what are you saying about not using rubbers? What's up? Let's see. I can I can see what he's saying. I'm trying to call him out. <laughs> still no rubbers. Got whites, but still no rubbers. Nice. Bioactivity, raw dog in his collection. No rubbers. <laughs> That's exactly how he said it. Uh, with cream and sugar. Yeah, I like the cappuccino with the cream and sugar. That's a good idea. That's a good way to put it. Poop corn and cream and sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so rubber duckies. I will say rubber duckies, hands down, are my most overrated. I think they're... For the value of what you get, I, I do. We'll say Cubaris. All of my Cubaris species hide like nothing else. Um, I do have a huge colony of Borneo. Um, well, they're not as huge as they used to be. They get overrun by escapees from my powder. Yeah, yeah. no, how so, it <laughs> Yeah, so I had to salvage what I could, and I'll still pull them out of the powder bin because now it's a powder bin. Um, yeah. I'll still pull them out of there from time to time. Um. Yeah, by activity was afraid of the puns. You can't put no rubbers in a co in a comment section on the internet. By activity, what are you thinking? Um, what is your uh, 
Give me some of your top five, your top five favorites. Top five favorites. All right. A lot of this is probably going to be basic, but Orselio Skaber. I love Skabers. Um, be specific. A... Favorite Skaber then? Favorite... Well, there's so much you could do with them. Okay, fine, fine. Favorite Skaber is probably going to be... Orange Coy! Orange Coy! <laughs> oh, Orange Coy is up there. Orange Coy is up there for sure. But Lava's... I got to go with Lava's. I, I got to get some lavas because everyone who has them says they're amazing and I don't have them and I kind of don't get it. I got to go over to Rick's house and see them because yeah, I want to see them in person. Once you see a lava in person, like I'm not going to lie. Some of them turn out nicer than others. Some of them turn out a lot more vibrant and the vibrant ones are really where it's at. I mean, it's, you, you can't beat it. Lavas, lemonades, orange coil, like you said, I love all those. Um, That's something I wanted to do. Uh, remind me later. Uh, I don't have a pen on me here. That sucks. Let me see. Okay, Ugh, I do have a pen. I want to bring this up later. We're still on the we're still on the top five. Okay, so Skaber, you have one specific Skaber, Lava. Okay, next. Okay, I'll go with Lava. All right, fine. I won't say any more Skabers just to keep it interesting. Um, what else? Expanses, Porcelio Expanses. Nice. I, That's on my I, list. I adore Expanses. Um, the only thing that, like I said, I like stuff that breeds fast. A lot of larger Porcelio just doesn't, but not much you can do about that. I think they are gorgeous, and I will give them that. Um, With a bigger scaber that's more bold, like the Expanses, I'll forgive them because you see them more, and they're massive. Yes. So I yes. don't have them. To be fair, I don't have them, but they're on my bucket list, right? So I want them. And get the prices them. are really good right now. So They are, yes. That is my recommendation. Uh, get Expanses. Um, yeah. Let's see. No, you're probably going to notice a trend here. Um, Porcelio okay. is probably my favorite genus. So I would say number three is, um, as Rick would call them, Flavo Margaritas. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what I call them. That's exactly yeah, what yeah. I call them. He's the person that told me that. He's like, yeah, I got those uh, Flavor Margaritas or whatever. I'm like, oh, Flavo Marginatus? He's like, yeah, those. I'm like, I like that, Flavo Margaritas. But um, that's another one. Um, and those ones, they look cool. They're not quite as big, but they reproduce pretty quickly too. So it's okay. like I always go in there, I look at them, I'm like, mint. They are so cool. Um, so let's see. We got mint. I like that. Play the margin on us. Um, kids in your slang. I will have to agree with Green Jedi Monkey. I'm an armadillidium guy. Um, I was going to be like the armadillidium guy of the Midwest. Like that was my goal. And then I ran out of money really fast. So I had to stop. Even though the armadillidium are generally really cheap unless you get ornery. Like that's about it. Yeah. I do like Armadillidium too. I mean, I, I like them more than Cubaris, that's for sure. But like I said, I got to go with Porcelio as my favorite. Uh, it's so freaking cool. The fact that they're actually roly polies is Armadillidium. All right, so you have three. We've yeah. got Expansis, Skaber, uh, Lava, and I just gave everybody the finger on accident. But um, <laughs> Nice. Uh, let that out. <laughs> Um, what was the other flavor of Mangiotis? Flavor Marginatus. Okay. I'm trying to think of what I might consider number four. Um, I might go with Ornatus. Um, it's actually gross. kind of funny. What? What do you mean I gross? think they're gross. They skeeve me out. I think they're just giant silverfish. Like something about them, they look slimy. They look greasy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everyone hates me for that. And I'm just, I can't yeah, do it. I, I don't. I don't. I never got that from, hey, you know, to each their own, you know. <laughs> to yeah, each their yeah. Own, I can't blame you. Um, it's funny. Uh, I I absolutely adore the witch's brew thing that they've been doing with them lately. Um, I do it, like the witch's brew. Yeah, it's like a magic potion, but a porcelio. What's not to like? Mm. I mean, I, I love it. They're definitely one of my favorites too. Um, and then obviously chocolate high yellows are they're cool. Um, so the colors on them are vibrant. I think the vibrancy of them are, is amazing. It is pretty. Yeah, the vibrancy is really nice. But um, so you got working. four. We got four. I'm trying to think. Of, Okay, might go with it's a toss up between Spatulatus and Werneri for Porcelio, um, two of the flat boys, and I like them because they are flat and they're cool. Uh, I'll probably go with Werneri just because they got that border around them. Um, I like that too. They look like uh, fossils. They have their like living. They do. That's why I know it's like some people call them like trilobites, isopods, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I see that. I see that. That's so cool. Um, they're just five hundred threes here. Hey. Um, yeah, I totally see that. I, I I would go Bolivari, I think, as my number five. See, I used to love Bolivari and say they were my favorite, but um, 
And, you know, I this is such a dumb reason not to consider that, but they have never done good for me, and I don't know why. Huh. Yeah. That would do it for me. That would do it for me. I would say Boulevard are my number five, but I, I don't think I can count them because I don't own them. But I still – I want them. I like that translucent cream kind of a look that they have. I like those really hard, like, scoots on the edge yeah. of their skirt. Like, they've got that really, like, defined line. Um, like, I like to draw them. They're really cool to draw. That's cool. No, I have to say, for sure. I, I agree with you there. But like I said, they just never did that well for me. I don't know why. Um, I just recently got more to my colony from um, one of the other guys around here, Joe. Um, and uh, so far, so good. So hopefully that works. Bolivari don't like it as dry as I thought. Like a bubble saying that Bolivari like a little moist. They do. Yes. I actually learned yeah. that from Smug Bug. Um, because at first I was keeping them bone dry and that didn't work. So then I read it on the Smug Bug form or something that like yeah they like actually like it almost like 50 50 so huh. and that's working pretty well for me so it's a good point <laughs> i need to check another thing out. i wish i knew there we go i wish i knew that boulevard didn't like it bone dry <laughs> <laughs> so you started out with boulevard is that what you're saying um i probably got them earlier than i should have yeah <laughs> i wish i would have known that if you culture armadillidium from your backyard and you wind up with thousands of them and decide to just re-release them into your yard, everyone in your neighborhood will be like, what's with all the roly-polies lately? <laughs> my roly-polies just expanded so hard into my yard. I think I was like, I, everyone's garden should do really, really well this year. Um, nice. You're doing a yeah. community service. I feel like I can't, I should release these dairy cows and get rid of the dog poop problem we have. <laughs> I'm not I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But look at this thing. Go to They are going to town. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, at first, I was like, you know what? I don't know. I could go either way. Um, but I kind of didn't expect it to for all this many to latch on this quickly. They, they really are going to town. They are. And now it's babies and everybody. Yeah. What's funny I, is, I have dairy cows in a lot of bins, random dairy cows, but I don't have anything in the dairy cow bin. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think there's a reason for that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Four adults. It, the uh, boulevard got down to four adults and then suddenly exploded. Now I have a bunch. Oh, that would be a great comeback. I'm hoping for that with my troglodilis. Troglodilphus. They're kind of like a Porcellio uh, clown isopod. Is mm -hmm. that they have the shape of the Porcellio, Porcellio but they're um, they're called troglodilis. I got them from the isopod chick. She's the only one I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I actually am not familiar with those. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I wanted to get their name. I have their name on their bin. They're around here somewhere. I just switched them out and I have four and I kept the old bin live because I want to make sure there's no mankai in there growing out. Um, they're in my top five just because no one else has them and they're really cool. Um, I don't have any evidence that the <laughs> the ant symbiotic isopods are still alive. <laughs> I spent $160 on these things, buying everything she had that, that she would be selling. And uh, I think I got like 60 of them. And they're, they're basically dwarf whites. And they're uh, symbiotic with ants. Yeah, they're they're known to live like they're only found really in the wild in ant colonies. So they clean up specifically ant mess and carcasses. Okay. Um, and I haven't seen one since I put them into this colony. So, um, and I have pretty good visual and everything, unless they just live in the soil and they don't live in the, like I put them with a funnel, I put them into the, the actual tunnels. So they'd be in there to start. And um, there's a good moisture gradient, or maybe they all drown because there's a water, there's like a water level down there that they, I'll see a drowned isopod here and there. Oh, but yeah. um, which, how stupid can they be? Like there's rocks to climb out on. Like, what are you doing? Well, no one said they were smart. That's what, uh, so Jason always says <laughs> about all these things. Like, no one said they were smart. <laughs> I got to get over and see you guys again. Um, so what is the fun of it for you as a as a keeper? Would you call yeah. yourself a keeper, a collector? Keeper, collector, hobbyist, whatever. Um, I think the biggest fun for me is just starting with you know a starter colony, obviously setting it up, um, and then watching it grow. Um. That's why, like I was kind of saying earlier, how I like the really fast producing stuff. Like I get mm -hmm. such an enjoyment out of 
massive colonies. I don't know what it is. Just like lifting up like a piece of bark and just seeing like everybody like running around. It's just, wow, this, yeah. is, this is my colony. I have so many. This is so cool. It sounds dumb, but I mean, that's. No, no. I mean, I love I, panda kings. Yeah. That's why I love my panda kings is they're just, yeah. they exploded immediately. They exploded and tripled, at least tripled in what I originally got. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's such a cool thing to see too. And like, I mean, especially I know the lot with the Panda Kings too. I mean, they're producing a lot of people are producing the variants. Like, I mean, you were saying with the red ones and everything. It's so freaking neat. So. Yeah. And they, I showed my wife what they were going for in an auction. They went for in an auction. Um, I, I want to say it was like a six plus count for $950. Jeez, man. And so I posted my picture of one and I showed her, I was like, this is $158 right here. <laughs> one little bug is $158. It, it's, it's amazing. It really is. She's like, what? And I was like, yeah. I, I said, I know I have six. I know I have six. So it's going to be time to separate them out pretty quick and yeah. uh, set them loose. But I want to see the genetics are clearly in my collection. So I want to see if I can get enough where it's, we had this argument, I think last week or the week before where six is not, I don't think six is a sustainable starting level. Like it's too much of a gamble at six. Yeah. So um, I don't want to pull them until I have like a dozen or two dozen. So um, I don't know. I, I've never had a colony succeed with six. I've never had a starter colony of six succeed for me. So yeah. I won't do a six count anymore. Honestly, I completely respect that. Um, I used to be like kind of on the fence about it but like i'd still be like all right yeah you could you could probably start with six but um i've also had a couple experiences in the past where now i'm just like eh, it, it kind of is more of a gamble um, i will say i will say if you're a seller and you sell six counts I, i'm i've come to terms with it it's your choice that's fine yeah i will say if you're a buyer buy a two two pack of six then because yeah. uh six i don't think six is it's too much risk especially with these what you're getting in six counts is the high end, the difficult species to keep. Um, I will say there are some high end species that are amazingly easy. The tricolors, by all accounts, breed like like dairy cows. Basically, they breed like. Oh, I wish I wish I had that luck. <laughs> Did you get them and they died? No, I. But it goes to what you were talking about. I got a six count. Um, maybe it was a five. I don't know. It was a five or a six count. Um, and I got it months ago. Like I think in the summer, maybe I don't know. And no babies, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> oh my god. Um, um, I would go balls to the wall for their setup. I would hold no, nothing back to do their setup. Like amazing. So, uh, what I've seen people with success is pretty moist. Mm -hmm. uh, like a 50 50 at least yeah so with like moist substrate and then the hides are drier so that's that's what i've seen online i haven't had any experience myself so and it, what works for one person doesn't work for another mm -hmm. so um like it took me forever to get clue guy going i was having luck with everything i had and my clue guy just kept dying off of old age um never any mankai and then i finally got a 50 count uh, from somebody and that now I have the hundreds that you see. So dwarf yeah. whites. Yeah, dwarf whites don't mess. I will say indestructible. My my vote for most indestructible I spot hands down goes to <clears throat> to uh giant canyons. So I had a bin, I have a giant canyon set up in a 10 gallon. So there it started off with like a hundred, I think almost a hundred members. So I had some get into another bin. I had some of the escapees get into another bin. And I had taken everything out of it. I kind of forgot about it. To be honest, I was I did a jerk thing and just kind of forgot about that bin. I left it under their tank, didn't think about it, left it there for months. Dry as a bone, because it's well ventilated. The whole thing, I mean, dry, like the soil was sand. I went to shuffle everything around the other day from moving everything. There's got to be like 30 or 40 in there. There's mankai. Like, they don't care. I would fed them. I haven't given them anything. Uh, so now they're spoiled rotten. I loaded them up with leaves and food and the whole deal. But um, I was like, oh, my, what? Oh, my God. So now I've got to combine all these into a giant bin. Jeez. Yeah, that's uh, that, honestly, that kind of surprised me. I never would have expected a giant. I mean, I knew they were fairly hardy and everything. I've never had any issues with mine. But, like, to survive, like, a desert like that, that's uh, 
It's impressive. I couldn't believe it. So if you need an arid species, uh, get some giant canyons. But I will say they are they are some protein hungry sons of guns. Yeah, they can be. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I was pretty shocked. I, it was total neglect because um, I was like, I've got a million canyons, like whatever. Uh, and yeah, there was there was at least thirty in that bin living. So they're going to actually go into the crested gecko enclosure. So they're going to go in there, which stays a little more moist in the bottom, but not too much because he gets misted every day. Um, and then it has his water bowl as well. So if they want moisture is there, but they can get away from it as well. Perfect. That's the way to do it. Give them that choice. Are you, do you use anything weird as your bioactives or are you straight like a powder guy, prunosis? Um... For the most part, I'll just do prunosis stuff um, for my bioactives. At one point, I actually did try um, the dairy cows in one of my gecko tanks. I had um, the Chihuahua geckos at the time. Um, okay. But then, um, and you know, this was actually a good point. Somebody brought up that, like, especially, like, because they were also laying eggs, too. And somebody brought up, um, well, with how protein-hungry dairy cows are, uh, you don't want them, like, messing with the eggs or anything. and um, Or even, like, God forbid, like, messing with the actual gecko itself. And then yeah. I thought, I was like, yeah, that's kind of probably a valid concern. So I, I switched them out of there and just put in powders. Um, I do have dwarfs in some of mine as well. Um, but I don't know. I just like the powders because dwarfs are, yeah, <laughs> they get everywhere. They get everywhere, but you—I mean—you don't see them. They kind of do their job without having an issue because they're just there. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of seeding my when I build my palladarium. I'm thinking of seeding that with dwarf whites. It won't yeah. be near too much, so it won't be like right on top of anything else. Um, <clears throat> but I just want it—I want that layer of bioactivity in there. Basically, they would replace worms, in my opinion, where they turn the soil and get to the roots of the plants, do better. Yeah. I'd like to do some experiments to see. That was the thing I wanted to talk about too, is experiments. Um, to see if they are as protein hungry, like to the point that it would be detrimental to something like a Chihuahua. A Chihuahua is a large gecko. Yeah. I thought that it would be detrimental or even to the eggs. Like the eggs can't survive uh, isopods. Like, like, how do they survive? But I know it's in an enclosed environment, so right. That and that like nature, it's enclosed. They can't, you know. There's right. not that option, and there's nothing preying on the isopod at that point. That in that number, <clears throat> and that's the thing. I mean, like, because like, like you were saying, when you think about it in a natural setting, I mean, like, oh well, these eggs are in like the wild or everything. But then, like you said, it enclosed environment. They, you know everything's it's, it's just a different than being outside it's just the way it is so i don't know that's true the that that's another thought that i just yeah it's not the same but i do wonder how much of an issue it is i haven't you hear horror stories but nobody has a first-hand story i've never heard a first-hand story of somebody saying that their reptile or their amphibian was damaged by isopods yeah i i haven't either the <laughs> only you know yeah, I was going to say, it's not even firsthand. Um, with the tarantulas, I know people are saying, like, yeah, don't put any of the big ones in with tarantulas. Because when the tarantula molts, it's completely defenseless, and then the ice pods might kill it. But um, same thing. It's just, like, people are like, oh, it might do this. It probably will do this. But I haven't – I don't think I've ever heard a firsthand uh, story either. So is it I conjecture? Mean, is it not? Who knows? On the one hand, it's not worth the risk. Right. It's exactly. animal that you're keeping. But on the other hand, like, is it real? How will we know if it's real? Yeah, um, it's, it's I'd be weird. willing to risk some centipedes for the experiment, but <laughs> not a fan of centipedes. No, we just had this talk at NARBC. Like, I had a big talk with a couple of centipede fans, and Rick was pointing them out to me. So, like, oh, look at this centipede! It's awesome. And it was a really pretty centipede. I don't. I wish he was here to tell me what species it was. It was like a jewel. It had like bright blues and bright red legs. It was it was really like pretty colors, but it was a horrifying centipede. So yeah, I was gonna say it's pretty, but it's still a centipede. So yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. So him, me, and uh, this random dude and his girlfriend were arguing. So the girlfriend was on my side. So of course I was instantly the girl afraid of centipedes. <laughs> but I was like, that's fine. I said if that thing's coming to my house, it's getting sledgehammered. I'm gonna tell you right now. 
Hey man, I um I know a guy that actually uh, you probably know him too. The little kid that works at Animal Island, Mike, that got actually got bit by one of those uh, scolopender centipedes before. Ooh, I didn't. He got bit. He got bit. Mm hmm. And sent him to the hospital, and he said he was in indescribable pain for like days. <laughs> so uh, after hearing that, I'm like, yeah, these things are. Uh, I don't really want to mess with them either. Like I feel like they could not even be venomous, and I wouldn't. I'd still be equally against them. <clears throat> yeah, they're just, they're just weird looking, man. Like so fast, so fast, long thing. Centipedes are horrible nightmare fodder. Millipedes are delightful small, small but important differences. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, millipedes are sick. Millipedes are just so chill and slow and cute. And then you got a centipede, which is like a freaking bloodborne oh. boss. Here we go. So here's a. It's still a secondhand account, but it's from Wally and his firsthand friend. So it's yeah. Wally's first-hand account that um, he's kept teased with powders. See, I yeah, want to feed my tarantula some canyons, but I don't want to risk giving them one with eggs or with babies. So, and then, you know, they get overrun or something. Yeah, but, like, it, it just goes to show you, too, because, I mean, let's see his convexes. Yeah, but, like, it just goes to show, like, he was saying that they kept powders with the tarantula, no issues, and like, I, I could totally see that working out. But then you have other people that are just arguing, like, yeah, well, it wouldn't. So it really is. It's like we were just talking about just differences, and everyone has different experiences. So this is the only one with a bigger. This is the only one where they're mentioning a bigger species. So my thought with tarantulas is they all build that nest with their webbing. I don't think an isopod would like go into that webbing well <clears throat> usually when they molt they um they lay down like that uh, like a mat of webbing but okay. some of them will literally molt like right out in the open um to the point okay. where you know, probably could crawl over it but even then you know i mean it's still a big creature that's like would isopods even want to touch like a tarantula exoskeleton i mean it's covered with all those hairs too like they'll literally kick yeah. hairs down before they molt and maybe it's for that purpose to just kind of deter any or deter any uh yeah like they're not ants they're not gonna like hold it down as a group and yeah like, right you know what i mean like let's get them guys like right. it might take a nibble here and there but it's an isopod nibble like i feel like it would be like your cat trying to play with that kind of a bite you know like oh yeah it yeah. kind of bothers me but whatever yeah so i don't know i i don't yeah. know i still have some tarantulas i don't keep any of them bioactive but um there's really no point. There's really no point to keep a tarantula right. bioactive. Like they, they don't produce that much waste. When they do, I mean, half the time it's just like you know a crap stain on the side. You can just smudge it off. It's you know whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's not that big a deal, and they're in like five inches of soil anyway. So yeah, yeah, um, exactly. yeah. I mean, what's the worst thing you do? Rehouse them and and fill that cocoa core back up, and you're good to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> Some of that mulch. Um, yeah, I think. I would say that I'd, I'd like to see people keeping them in it or better species, not better species, but um, more exotic species in as a bioactive to add a, another layer of like flavor to the tank, like zebras. I've seen people use zebras a lot. I've seen people use um, it, everyone's just not using dairy cows, I think, because they have this. Well, you can see how ravenous they are. <laughs> There's got to be a good 50 on there, right? I would say so. Counting babies. Uh, babies are so cute. <laughs> They're all going to be yellow tomorrow. Oh, my. Oh, my dear God. I'm going to think I have a morph. I'm going to go, holy cow. Yellow yellow cow. cow. <laughs> Peace, no cows. Yeah. That'll be great. That'll be my stupidity at work. Um it, did you come across any morphs in your bins? Have you seen any morphs come up in yours? Not really. Not with my Lavis. Um, there was a time when I was trying to mess around with some scabers um, in my Lotto Mix bin. Like, I would just kind of, like, check it every week and, like, see if anything cool were popping up. The coolest thing I got was um, – it was almost – it was probably, like, a pied calico. Um, so – and I called them bombsicles because the dark – they had, like, a gray that almost resembled, like, a blue – 
Then they had a bit of red in them, um, like the red calico or lava. And then they had like the pied, so just like white splotches. So it was like the red, white, and blue. So I was like, <laughs> it looks like a bomb pop. It's so cool. Um, nice. Those ones were cool. I tried isolating them, but um, never really got like a true lineage going. So I still have the bin with some of them in it, but it's nothing I ever really like proved out or anything. But it was pretty cool. Bob yeah, I was so trying I to see. Cool. I'm trying to see right now if I can prove out one strain of Punta Cana. Oh, okay. um, but they are diverse. Like they just shoot off whatever babies like as part of their genetics. So it's kind yes. of yes. It's kind of hit or miss. I'm trying to see, and the babies are coming out just random. So I'm kind of separating out the babies that don't match my criteria as soon as I see them. But again, that's hard because they don't get their colors till they're basically breeding age. Yeah. Then what? Like they're probably already pregnant. So <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, it's one see, of the toughest things. It is, and but um, that's another thing. Like I do, I do really like those, like the Punta Canas or the Scabers, um, Trachylipus rathke is another one. Um, the ones where it's like there's a lot of diversity within the species as they breed, because then it's like you never know what you're gonna get, and then you might get something really cool. Like the the Gastroids, another one that has been thrown out. Um, Armadillium gastroid has been throwing out some cool stuff. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, like I don't know if you, uh, Brandy, uh, she got, she calls them zingers. It's like a white spotted gastroy. Um, it's really freaking cool. Um, and then I know I just, I forgot who it was, but in one of the groups, somebody like got like an almost like pure yellow gastroy. And I was freaking out. The thing was like so freaking cool. So that would be great to see that on that size. Yeah, I know. And like, it, it, I, I really do like Gastro. They're one of my favorite armadillidiums. And the fact that, you know, they're throwing out different color patterns now, I'm like, I'm really hoping people, uh, more people start isolating these because uh, I would definitely like to uh, cop some of those. They're such slow breeders, though. Oh, my they God. Are. But see, they have big broods, which kind of makes up for it. But it yeah, they do have big broods. Take forever. I somehow have uh, Mankai or like younglings, juveniles in a bin somewhere else of my Gastro, which boggles me because they were never really in a bin they were only ever in this uh jar that they're in so they were only ever in this like display setup so i on a table 20 feet away from my other bins so but i have i don't know like 30 destroy baby and another bin that i have to separate out and bring back over so I, maybe they came in with that species i don't know oh trying to move my legs and not mess up that camera okay <laughs> This has some tweaking to do. I got some tweaking to do in this setup. I love the destroy. Um, and then obviously I love a fish and Alice. That's the oh, original. fish and Alice are so cool. The mascot of the show is an fish and Alice for sure. Yeah, uh, orange crush fish and Alice. So cool. I've got to get some. I've got to get some. I, I know a guy to. who has some, but I have to get some for sure. They you look like little to. grapefruits to me. Like like you take they the peel off a grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> they, they actually do. Yeah, I actually got some uh, kind of recently from a buddy of mine uh, over in New Mexico, and I was I was like I kept bugging him. I'm like, are the orange crush ready yet? Are the orange crush ready? He's like, all right, I finally have some. Just you can take them now. Just and I was like, yes. That's another slow breeder. Officials yeah. are so slow, and they don't have big broods and. They don't. By the time you see the babies, they're half grown. Um, I just bought another <laughs> dozen. It said a dozen, but I didn't. I never found a dozen in that bin. But it could have been in there. I just kept all the soil. I just put all the soil. That was at NARBC. So um, I was looking for deals. That was such a good spot, man. Everybody had such cool stuff. Um, it's like going to a hands-on zoo, basically. Yeah. I was, I was sad I couldn't make it this year. This was like the, the first time in years I wasn't able to attend. Just too much going on, but we get to work at the zoo, man. Those parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When are you, some... are you out of the children's zoo yet or are you do you're over that children's zoo still? I'm still over there. Uh primarily the children's zoo and like the uh the wild encounter. So yeah, like the parakeets, goats, wallabies. Um they are trying to expand the department. So I think once summer rolls around, I'll be doing like um penguin encounters and giraffe feedings and stuff too oh that would be fun yeah it, it really would be um and the like the butterfly garden too i'm really excited for so i think it'll be a good time seek and destroy oh you think you have destroy in your area 
Seek and destroy. <laughs> Sorry, I get it. Seek and destroy, but seek and destroy. <laughs> nice. Yeah, good luck finding them in your area. If you find them uh, in your local town, that'd be awesome. I would hunt those every day. Seriously? I can't get over it. So soil mix, are you a homegrown or are you? Uh, do you have a source? I probably would be better off if I did homegrown because I know a lot of people are doing that and they seem to have really good results for it. I just use the miracle Grow like organic potting mix um, that other people use. And <laughs> hey, it works. I mean, <laughs> it's like it has earthworm castings and all this other good stuff on there. I'm like, whatever, it'll work. I'm not going to oh. lie, this, that's usually my base. That was my original base uh, soil when I started making my own. Because um, I took bits and pieces from like five people's soil mix online. And my wife was like, what are you doing? You're buying all these gardening supplies. <laughs> and they're not going in the garden. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. You're going to something better. <laughs> I was like, I've got to have 120 awesome. pounds of substrate down there. Oh, my God. It's cheaper if you get it in bulk. At the time, I had like five species. <laughs> um, at like five, twelve counts. Uh, oh, it was nice. pretty funny. Yeah, I was pretty ridiculous about it. And so then I kept just adding stuff to those bins and turning it every day. And it was ridiculous. I put worms in there, like actual worms in my oh. soil bins. Um, that was dumb because then I had thousands of worms. Um, well, see that you could have sold the worms. I mean, people would buy those as food. Yeah, I guess I could have used them for my goofy newts. Now they go through red wigglers like you wouldn't believe it. Yeah, there you go. Newts love those things. What you feeding tea? Who's tea? What's up? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, I got you. Ophi just stepped up. Rick just stepped up. This omelet, bro. It's oh, it's omelet. Yeah, Rick showed up. Hi, Rick. It's got a uh, egg, egg, bacon, vegan cheese, so non-dairy. Uh, I don't know if they handle dairy well. Not many species process dairy. Um, and the eggshell <laughs> and some salt and some salt. So I definitely use kosher salt. Look at that beast. Holy Dang, cow. That guy's a unit. Look at him go. <laughs> oh. <Want> to die. <laughs> He's like the king isopod. He's probably like two days away from dying. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Do you know how you just see one that's massive and like two days later you do your bin checks and you're like, oh, there he is. Yeah, I hate when that I feel like it's always the armadillidium too. Like with the gastroi or the freaking uh vulgarum magic potions. I don't know. There you go. Oh. Getting the shout out. He said he misses you at the store for sure. Oh, I miss him too. Seeing him was always the highlight of my day. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing him I can get, imagine. getting him his uh usual uh, couple dozen crickets and whatnot. Good times. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's got to up that ante pretty soon. He's got too many species now. Yeah, I feel um, like every time I see him, he's got new stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's got that. Uh, uh, Rick, what was that uh, species of centipede that we saw at the show? I'm glad you showed up because I was asking. I, I couldn't remember. It was a jeweled something. I think it was like it was like 800 bucks or something. <laughs> Jeez, 800 bucks for a centipede. Yeah. Dude, I was like, buy it, buy it. He's like, I got the money. I'm like, then buy it. Like, that's the problem. <laughs> that's buy it, awesome. buy it. Yeah, I was that's the worst. Your pressure right there. Yeah, I was the worst. I was like, buy it, buy it. Of course. Jeweled centipede. Oh, 550. Sorry. It's five. Like, what do you say? Is that 550? 550. Yeah, either way, I was pressuring him. I'm like, do it, dude, do it. Well, do half it, a bro. gram for a scary bug. <laughs> yeah, and it was already basically full size. It had to be like this long. You know, See, I mean, it's all. So cool, though. I do selling that deli food. cup all turned around. Oh yeah. Feeding it snakes. Jeez. Leechy money? Not at NARBC. It's not. Those you're not getting a leechy for 550 at NARBC, brother. <laughs> <laughs> One with missing a leg or something. Like yeah. <laughs> those oh, people are crazy. Easy. Um, they didn't uh they had a couple of really good pod people there. I got to see some really cool species in person. Like, I'd never seen Jupiters. I never compared Jupiters and Lemon Blues. Um, and so that was kind of cool to see the difference, like, in person. Because in pictures, they look like the same iSpot to me. They do. Um, but in person, it's like, oh, okay. And uh, it was from iSpot.com was the ones that had them. And uh, I know people say that they – that was the thing. Oh, my God, that was the thing I wanted to talk about. So experiment. 
um, they kept their colors on theirs. And I know that's been an issue, keeping colors in Lemon Blues and uh, uh, Jupiters. What do you think as a keeper and a, a, you know, a current scientist and future possible master's degree scientist, what do you think we're missing or we could add to our uh, uh, foodstuffs or additives to increase color in our isopods? Oh, man, you're asking me the difficult questions now. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, Test out that brain, Skrillex. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the Skrillex has enough of a brain to answer that one. I'm trying. It's like, I feel like there's just so many things that could come into play that we wouldn't even know about. Like just different minerals and vitamins and just mixtures in whatever mixtures to be. Oh my God, dude. Why well, you got to put me in a spot like this? Well, um, I think I, I kind of want to uh, recruit you because this came to me. So this is what happens every episode. I come up with an idea and I recruit people on the show for the idea. Like this just came up in the in the moment. So you said scavers. So clearly you have a lot of scavers mm-hmm. and you know they breed like crazy. Yes. I just have the one species, but I have... I just sold or traded a bunch and I still probably have hundreds, if not a thousand. So my, and to anybody on here, if you want to get involved in this, like let's take some scavers that are known for their colors, like a dozen or two, separate them out, maybe even two bins of a dozen or two and start feeding them like specifically an additive, like give everybody else the same thing, give them all the same stuff, but one additive. So the control is your general diet. And then the additive is like, I don't know. I was looking at like, like Omega One Fish Flakes, or they have like the Tetra, Tetra Min has their like color boosting for fish. Yeah, that's that's so kind of like keratin in it, right? Mm-hmm. So shrimp would be a thing, I would think, like a higher shrimp content or Red River shrimp, plankton stuff like that. Carrot squash, spinach, quinoa, spirulina. Mm-hmm. You think so? Thalaquatus thinks so highly. What? Carotene, carot, carotenoid? I had fish food with high carotenoid to help with color. Bug Brigade. Bug Brigade. We're going to have Pete from Bug Brigade on the show. Um, he agreed to come on. He's a super energy guy. Like, just really good energy. Uh, Astaxanthin? What the hell? <laughs> what are these words you're saying? <laughs> Thalaquatic set. Okay, I'm gonna post that. Sorry, you can't really see the comments. So Thalaquatics is saying directly add a stax, a staxanthin to the food item. I don't even know what that. I've never even heard of that. I don't know what that is either. <laughs> I feel it's so got to be something at like GNC that <laughs> helps you yeah, get that like V in your crotch, that V muscle, whatever that is. Yeah, totally, totally something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Your isopods well, are gonna be not. checked. Yeah, dude, we'll just throw like mass gainer in there and like see what see what happens. Just some protein powder. <laughs> some yeah, right. isopods. So crusty diet, a BPZ color mix. It's common in fish foods. Okay, so that's probably what they're using in fish foods to get those colors out. So that's gotta be a tip. See, that needs to be if that's a tip that people are using, that needs to be more widely known because that's not a breeder thing. Like that's you're maintaining those colors you're breeding out of your your stock. Basically, you're maintaining it and enhancing it a little bit. All right. That's cool. I still want to do this experiment thing and see what kind of results we get. I think that would be cool, too. Like, especially when people get on the butter. Um, you know, like you're saying, we have a controlled diet, but then maybe, like, other people try a different additive compare results. Be cool. Yeah. Could be good. Could be good. I mean, it would be a super scientific thing, but just to see like basic observations. Yeah. Uh, good that. fish flake. Yeah. The Tetra, while he's saying the Tetra one has good color additive, that would be a fine supplement. I think that's a good idea. And you could get the Tetra stuff really cheap. Yeah. You know, use co- oh, he doesn't use color enhancing foods, which is fair, which is fair. I just use eggs. I can't believe yeah. how much they're crushing this thing. Like, I feel like since the beginning, like, they've just, like, they've gone on at the beginning, some of them. They've just stayed there the whole time. They're just, like, not getting the full. <laughs> Bottomless pits, man. That one right in the middle. 
I want to like yeah. reach down and touch him, but I don't want to mess up the camera. <laughs> I, I see the one you're talking about. He's just, it's so he's many like, problems. Oh. This guy right here. Yes, oh. exactly. Oh, no, you scared him. He's like, eh. I just fat shamed him. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's like, fine, I'll go eat somewhere else, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were gonna point at me, bro. What the hell? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, um, I don't fun. usually give them anything like this. So these guys just had a they had like four carrots yesterday, four of the baby carrots yesterday, and there's just nubs in there now. So Yeah, they like their carrots. I'm still uh, I'm just gonna excited to try the fingernail or the toenail thing, man. That's 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 gonna be cool. <laughs> Wally's telling me the red dye and bacon bits. I used real bacon. Wally, I was a chef, so it's real bacon, bro. Uh, standardized substrate. Would we need to use standardized substrate? Uh, no, I don't think a standardized substrate. Use your substrate. Uh, hey, Kyle. Uh, use your own substrate. That's fine. Obviously, that's the wild card because everybody uses different stuff. Which one of your animals just escaped? That wasn't one of my animals. That's my roommate. I think my oh, okay. roommate escaped. So <laughs> he's being. It wasn't it? I was like, did we just see a ghost on tape? Are we gonna be? Are we gonna be on somebody else's channel? No, that's my most high maintenance animal of all. <laughs> <laughs> he's eating cereal off a plate. What the hell, man? Wash a dish. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we are gonna be showing off some stuff. So uh, you missed it, Kyle. You're going to have to go back to the beginning of the episode. I made poor Luke sit while I uh, showed off the new zone right after showing it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see it twice. It was twice as long. Right nice. after. Yeah. You had to see it twice. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. It's got some work to do. I got some, some tweaking to do. But for now, I'm really excited about this setup. So it's literally my Zen place. Um, yeah, I think there's more... Uh, uh, choice i think now in the hobby there's more choice than way more than even when i got into it a year ago like a little over a year ago i've only been on ass pods like 18 months maybe um and just that what's exploded since then is just insane to me and the amounts that people are getting for certain things is like i thought prices were crazy for things when i started oh my um, god i mean do you remember the price of panda kings like i'm sure even when you started like 18 months ago and I think they were like a buck eighty. I think they were one hundred eighty dollars for ten or something. <laughs> it's crazy, and now you can get like ten for like forty from some people. Can you? I'm because I think that's smart. I think that I've been saying that for months. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think the price can maintain because they're just everywhere. Once you get a dozen, you have five hundred. No, that's absolutely it. I mean, and what else can you expect? Like the same with like the Mirana papayas. Like, if it breeds quickly everyone's going to have a bunch. I mean, of course the price is going to yeah. go down. It's just, you know, how it is. It's just it's wait a little bit. That's why it, now I got to sit here and wait. Now I was on the front. Um, the deal fell through, but I was in the front lines of getting the tri tri colors. Um, I was talking to a guy from wherever they're from Thailand, I think. Yeah. Uh, and he had a guy, he was shipping him to a guy in Canada with permits. Then the Canada guy was getting him to a guy in New York. And then the New York guy was shipping him out. And it was like, this is insane. Like, the shipping alone was going to cost about the same as the pods. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, at that point, just like zooming all over the yeah. place. Yeah, I was like, do I need to buy a scuba suit and meet a boat out in the harbor? Like, what is happening? Um, but that was going to be a fortune. And I was down. I was like, if I could breed these and sell them, like, they're nowhere. They're nowhere to be found. I could make my own. I could name my own price. And they're already down from that price that I was going to pay for being the first person they're already like well under that price. So, uh, you know, just waiting six months. Yeah. But I think some of the stuff that we have, like, are we spoiled for choice? And where, you know, why aren't we getting any from Australia? What does Australia have that we don't have? We well, need an Australia Australia, pot collector. Well, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Australia, like, they're like pretty, they won't let you import pretty much anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Care. Yeah, because they've had too many rough encounters with invasive species, so it's like right. a giant Hawaii. Um, um, but there was just a video. I think somebody just posted a video to our Facebook page, Iso Buddies, where it was just an ocean of isopods running across the the outback, like millions of isopods just trekking across red sand. It looks like giant canyons. They don't look like anything fancy, 
But um, somebody just posted pictures of their springtails, and they have a, a springtail species that's like crazy beautiful. It's just I don't even understand. Like it's it's three different colors. There's weird patterning on it. See you, Wally. Have a good night. Oh, um, like what is Australia holding out on us? Like I just want to see pictures of their stuff. Yeah, it's they got some cool stuff for sure, but I don't know. There's one. It's not even from Australia. I don't even know where it's from to be honest. Um, Porcelio spinipus. Oh. This really cool. Porcelio species. It's got some yellow in it. Um, and I know they have it in Europe, like in the hobby, but I do not know a single person in the U.S. with one. Um, so if anybody uh, if anybody listening right now has a lead on Porcelio spinifus, I will uh, probably pay a lot more than I should. So just, just, uh, <laughs> just keep, that mind, keep that in mind. But, um, yeah, we just established he doesn't have a girlfriend anymore, so he's got money. Yeah, man, I got money to burn. So <laughs> just, just hit me up. I'll do whatever you want. That horrible girlfriend left, and she's out of the picture. Yeah. Um no wait no 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 it's not it's not spin it's not spin a penis it's like spinipus that's the thing like it's oh, okay there's there um a lot of people because I know some people have the spin a penis or whatever but spinipus it's it's cool I okay. swear it's not spinny penis not spinny yeah no not that one <laughs> pretty sure that's how they spelled it just now yeah spinny penis Okay, yeah, I it's, want not, those. it's not that one. That was that, that's not the one with the funny name. It's I want spinny little... penis and flavor ma- flavored margaritas. I want a whole wall of just stupid named isopods. Flavor, yeah. That, and that's that's awesome. kind of valid. <laughs> spinny penis. So you spinis spinipus is what you're talking about. Spinipus, yes, not spinny, not okay. spinny. Now I have to Google that or you're going to send me pictures because I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, nobody – and, like, that's the thing. Like, nobody in the U.S. I have know of or have ever met, like, <laughs> has them. But I look them up, and then, like, of course, like, some German people have them. Oh, they're so cool. I just Google them now because I had to see them again. So freaking cool. Can you share your screen? Are you on the same thing? I don't know. Can I share my screen? Is it on the same screen you're on? I think so. Let me pull these pods oh, up here. I, I, do, I can't hit share. Hold on, hold on. Share screen. Uh, share screen. Boom. Can you guys see this? Not yet, no. I think you have to click on the screen itself. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Dude, I feel like such a boomer right now. Oh, my God. Um, such a boomer. I am a boomer. F you, man. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. All right. All right no, let's okay, see. okay. Look at this. Uh, let me make oh, that so big. Cool. How do I make hold this on. Big? Let me pull me out. Oh, wait. Make that your full screen. When you click that on, make that your full screen. This one right here? Hold on. When you when you share screen, make it your full screen, like maximize it. That should put it up. Uh where did it go? I don't know. Oh my god. This is like screen layout. Here we go. Uh that just screwed everything up. Hold on. Whoa, that was cool. (laughs) That was not cool. Wait, let's see if we can get it like this. Whoa, there we what go. What the hell is happening? This is so cool. <laughs> there we go. All right. Okay. All right. Can you guys see it? Yeah, it's like a little pineapple. A pi- I like that. A pineapple. So freaking cool. And like, yeah, like I said, I said, I every time I look for one for sale, it's like there was one dude in Germany or something, and like messaged him. He's like, yeah, I won't ship out of the country. I'm like, do you help me? Yeah, you so, gotta find a guy who has like a, a shipper, basically. Yeah, like some to get some kind of connection. But oh my the god, the Iranian pods, the monogamous ones. I actually only have don't. one, one, one lover. Is that what you're saying? Dang. Let's see. Let's get those in there. Well, how come that's not working? There we go. Nobody wants to see us. Let's get back to the omelet. Hemi, Hemi, what? Henelep, Henelepidus genus. Monogamous. So they, what, they pair off? Is that what you're saying? I, yeah, I actually, that's kind of surprising me to hear, like, pods doing that. Like, that's really interesting. Like a crustacean or an insect. Like, you don't, like an insect. I, I don't know. That's a, Just an wow. invert in general, I feel. Yeah. That's just, like... So cool. It's like I swear. It's like the more you know, the more you know you don't know. It's just always something new. 
it's so weird that there's so much in this uh, species, I guess, of animal. Like, I know there's different species, but I mean, in this, in isopods, there's so much variation. It, that's what right. drives me to see it now. Because when I start, even when I started in the hobby, there wasn't this much. You saw, like, yeah. oh, there was Porcelio style, there was the flat ones, there's the ones that roll in a ball, there's the one species that's just armadillo. Um, that was it. There was like some, you know, there's some random, but now you're seeing species that are very, uh, you're seeing people finding species that are very, uh, specialized. Yeah, exactly. Like the, uh, Hilaria brevicornis or whatever. Um, those ones are definitely on my, uh, to get list. Um, I haven't seen them in person, but it's like, I think it's like they can only reproduce once before they die. If they get gi ginormous, I think it's supposed oh, to be the God. biggest one that can roll into a ball. Is that so, the Hella Brevicornis or whatever? Yes, yes, that one. Yep. Yeah. That's another ice pod that's like you never see it because they straight burrow. Yeah, uh, I need to contact St. Helena Isopod Researcher and have them on the show. I should do that. I will I will make a note of that somewhere. Um, message me that. Message me that, Jedi Monkey. That sounds or I'll come back through the through the thing. Through the comments, um, I need to get smarter to talk to the actual researchers <laughs> because I felt like such a moron when I talked to Oren. Um, I just felt like such a dummy. Like I, I felt like that Chris Farley bit when he used to interview people. Like, remember, remember that time when you bred those isopods? That was so cool. Like, <laughs> that was that was my question. It was so awful. Dude, I, that, that would be me, though, too. I can't even blame you. <laughs> Some yeah. people are just on a whole other level. Right. And then it was like, but, but he wasn't. Like, I don't know. It was just such an awkward. I, we were just both really awkward. It's not my thing. <laughs> nice. Um, now there's our boreal isopods? What the hell are you boreal. talking about? The super endangered <clears throat> one? Anybody know what's going on with that St. Helena isopod? Too many isopods, man. St. Helena researchers. Everybody loves Chris Farley. They do love Chris Farley. Um, I'm getting there. I'm getting the Chris Farley level. Uh, they look a lot like spiky whites. Those are ones that I want. Those spiky ones that look like uh, kind of like a dandelion almost. The puffy dandelion. I like those. Yeah, like the dead dandelions. Those ones are – I forgot the name of them. They're very uh, – they're, they're a nice looking one. I stopped obsessing over the isopods. Like I wanted to try to see what I could do for the species that I have before I try to branch out. Like I yeah. love the idea. Here's the thing. Like if you're first watching an isopod, <laughs> if this is your first isopod video and you're still watching, God bless you. <laughs> Click like and subscribe, <laughs> please. <laughs> By now. But um, if not, even if it is, even if, if you're going to see your like 500th isopod video, I think it's great. You can keep them in, in this. All right, this is my, what is this? Magic potions, which are doing really well. So you can see the lid. They're doing exceptional, I would say. I wish you could see them. There we go. Oh, wow, yeah. There I say they're doing well. That's not even under the bark. So, um, yeah, they're crushing it. They just got leaves like a couple days ago. Uh, I don't have a species, I think, that breeds as much as they do. Or you can get a setup like this. So this, uh, since I already did the spoiler, we're going to do a challenge on IsoBuddies. This is my little, like, display thing for blue pigeons that are burrowed, and I'll never see them again until there's 700 in this little thing. Um, so and this is just an example of what you can keep. I mean, this is tiny. This is tiny. Um uses sphagnum moss as a drainage layer. So genius. Um, or you can keep them in a 10-gallon tank. Like uh, I'll be featuring that soon on a build video. So uh, the 10-gallon that I did for my uh, giant canyons. So you can make it as elaborate as you want or as basic as you want. And they're so easy. You can keep 50 species at once. I think that's the draw. And like we discussed with Orin, like they don't care. They're bugs. Like, yeah. Are you feeding me? Okay, cool. I, I could live here. That's life, yeah. As long as I get food, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Am I comfortable? Can I make babies? Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. I'll do that. So they're just like almost the perfect uh, 
not pet. I don't want to call him a pet. Yeah, so yeah, drain his layer. That's my new, uh, that's kind of my new expensive <laughs> uh, uh, pro tip is to use, I have, I did it in a, in a bowl. I just did a bowl of vivarium for uh, Parase and Orange Koi. And there's one magic potion in there that I found in another bin. It just was like, ah, I'll throw you in there. Um, haven't seen him since. <laughs> haven't seen him walk around yet. Uh, and there's a Volgar that got in there somehow. But, um, and it also has uh, uh, white dwarfs and lawn shrimp. Have you seen lawn shrimp? I don't think I have. So they kind of look like fleas, but they just dive into the dirt. Like they're gone. Once you stir up the dirt, you kind of see them popping around and then they're gone. But they mm. literally are shrimp. If you can, like, if you, you have to see them dead, like they won't stay still. So um, the only way to really see them up close is to see them basically dead because they don't, they're lightning fast. Jeez. Uh, yeah, so I put rocks and then sphagnum them on top of that, like an inch, inch high, soaked all that, let it sat down, and then the dirt on top of the sphagnum. So if some does go through, I'm not really worried about it, but it's all very uh, organic, right? And those organics are going to break down for the plants. The St. Helena isopod. Thal Aquatics went deep on this one. Pseudolariola atlantica. Yeah, that's uh, I haven't heard of that one. Now, what is this? So somebody was saying that this is uh, super, super uh, endangered. And then someone else asked if it was arboreal. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I mean, why not? Why wouldn't there be an arboreal ice spot? Like, big gibbon arms on it? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, use the fucking antenna to swing. That'd be yeah. pretty cool. I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta draw that. That's gonna be my new ma ma mascot. Ma 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 ma. Um, but I th I think that's the draw, right? That's that's the biggest part of it is you can do it kind of as cheap as you want to. Yeah. Like we don't support just putting them in cocoa core, but you could, as long as you give them right. something else to eat, some other food source, you could, or you could dig up dirt in your neighbor's yard when they're not home. Throw some leaf litter in there, and you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, there's many different ways to kind of approach it, and that is a pretty big draw and part of the appeal of it. So, I dig it. It lives in redwood trees. Extremely endangered. It lives in one small island. Most of its habitat has been destroyed. Hmm. That's crazy. Now I need to Google this thing and find pictures of it. Black cabbage trees. What the? F <laughs> I'm learning a lot from my uh, audience today. <laughs> yeah, I, I am too. Well, this is a very educational experience. Uh, do you mist or do you pour water? Um, I mist. I have one of those. Um, what is it? The, the ones that like the pest control people use, where you like pump yep. it. And then, yeah. You I have to. That. Once you get past like ten bins, you have to get the sprayer. Yeah, so. no, you're you're not doing this for like ninety yeah. bins. You're gonna die. <laughs> I almost want a second one, like one for in here, and then one mm -hmm. for my satellite yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, the more the better. I mean, geez, I wish I had like a five gallon one. Like, I feel like the one that I have, which was like the two gallon one, is too small. Yeah, my two gallon oh, one. I feel like I'm I'm filling it up every day. Every time I do checks. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's partly because I use it for the the gecko too so. right yeah so if you're using it for other stuff i mean it's gonna go faster yeah probably. even with the greenhouse thing he's in a screen one of those screen enclosures so the the humidity <laughs> goes pretty quick um like i said he's got his water dish and everything set of redwood but i only did a quick scan okay okay menagerie has got three of those misters i believe that um, so yeah, get into ice pods. If you're not in ice pods and you're here, that's weird. But um, if you <laughs> are, <laughs> yeah, might be a little odd. I mean, we don't just do isopods, but I mean, you know, I mean, iso buddies product. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We kind of lost the productions. We I kicked that out. I just was like, let's let's make it all the same. Um. Extermination Mister from Walmart. Yep, same thing. That's what I got. Yeah, the classic. Uh, yep, 
it, mine is marketed for fertilizer, but it's one aisle away from the one that's an exterminator one. Same damn thing. Yep. Yeah. So if you're not into ice pods, get into ice pods. If you're going to get into ice pods and you're in the Midlothian area, look up Luke. Well, he's probably got the hookup. How many species have you got? I think I got like 90 bins. Um, so not all different species. Like I said, I, like I got a lot of scabers and stuff. So just different morphs. But I think I got 90 okay. bins, give or take. So a little bit. morphs. Morphs almost count now. Right almost. Now, right. People are so crazy about them. What are your uh, scabers? You got lavas, you got koi. What do you got? I got lavas, regular koi, orange koi, orange embers, lemonades, uh, piebalds, skewbalds. Uh, am I missing a couple? I totally am. Red calicos, uh, ghosts, orange Dalmatian. The ghosts are pretty cool. They are. I like it. Very spooky. I. <laughs> Spooky. Undead <laughs> isopods. Yeah, I think it's funny to have the extermination mister, the exterminator mister. Like, they, do they yeah. look at it like, oh, God. It's like, oh, it's going to exterminate us. <laughs> I, 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 I did find it a bit ironic, actually. <laughs> well, if you have pro tips, share them in the comments. If, if we missed a pro tip for you or a, a species that you don't agree with as a top five, or as if you don't agree that rubber duckies are garbage, um, they're not garbage. They're not garbage. They are adorable, and they are the mascot for our hobby. I should shut up, right? No, you shouldn't. You're fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right. I also hate actual pandas, so you know who you're talking to. I also can't stand actual pandas. Like, just go extinct already. Crying out loud. Um, I mean, fair. I'm amazed they made it this long, you know. If you, you are kind of worse, uh, yeah, they have a carnivore's digestive system, but they only eat bamboos. They're constantly on a state of starvation. Like, they're constantly on the edge of starvation. Like, what what kind of life is that? Yeah. No one said they were smart. <laughs> nice. Jason's making it. I feel like I can feel him in the room. Jason energy is in the room, yep. <laughs> right. I knew who your mentor was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My mentor. It's <laughs> a good one. It's a good one. I need to get in there and talk to him about uh, the the nano shrimp. Oh yeah, he's um, the one to talk to on those. He's he's definitely at the hook up on all those things. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't know where I was. I totally lost track again. But they are so it is. There's something zen about doing your bin checks, going through, finding a surprise. Once in a while, we find a bad surprise, like a colony crash or something. But um, that's few and far between. I think I've had one, two, maybe. Yeah, and that was that bacterial outbreak. It wasn't like the random ones you hear about where just all of a sudden, like, the vents were bad or something right. happened and the whole colony crashed. Um, rubber duckies and poop corns. Yes, Brendan Leal. <laughs> Is that your buddy, Brendan? No, that's not. But I'm I'm happy that uh, I recruited somebody else that is going to be calling rubber duckies <laughs> poop corns. We, we got to make it a movement. Poop corns. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen them in the channel. That's funny. <laughs> that is so good. I, I dig it. Whenever you do your round table, I want an invite. I have all kinds of random facts stored up to start combos. All right, Thal Aquatics. Uh, if you're in Isobuddy, shoot me your email or message me. Because um, everybody's name on here is different than their name on anywhere else. It's very frustrating. Um. Because I don't know who anyone is. They have to say, oh, no, I'm so-and-so on YouTube. Uh, yeah, shoot me your email, or you can email me. Here. Whoop. Here you go. Personal email. Boom. I don't care. Go crazy with it. That would be great. Thal Aquatics has a lot of information. I, I want to do more roundtables. We're going to have another one coming up on roaches um, where it's my roundtable is like three people. So, and I'm just a moderator because I don't know anything. So <laughs> I know how to make really horrible omelets. <laughs> That's it. Well, the dairy cows seem to like it. So must seem I'm going to watch this video again, just to watch them. Like I'm going to watch it after this. It's kind of therapeutic. Yeah. Just kind of slowly watching them go at it. I can see it. Right. 
I just added, um, speaking of knowing someone's personal email, uh, no, I shouldn't say anything. Um, I'm very into revenge, uh, like to an unhealthy extent. So if I have your personal email, don't cross me. That's all I'm saying. Menagerie, don't do that to me. Come on now. Um, but yeah, get into, get into isopods. Get peaceful. Make them omelets occasionally, but not your cubaris because you're going to get outbreaks of mold. Yeah. Um, and not <laughs> That's the takeaway from today. Right? Uh, yeah, cubaris, uh, just give them whatever. Give them food that's not going to mold. Um, the isopod chow, supreme gecko isopod chow. Yeah, which I might be addicted to now. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you didn't watch the episode where I actually ate it, taste tested the isopod chow. Yeah, that one I did not see. <laughs> was it good? Uh, no. no it wasn't good. <laughs> That's a good word for it. No, uh, it was like um, it was like if they found uh, uh, bread. If you found bread in a pyramid, like you're an archaeologist and you try to bite. <laughs> Like that's literally it's like mummy bread. <laughs> mummy bread. Gotcha. It's like ugh, ugh, what is no moisture whatsoever. <laughs> flour. Basically it's flour. All right. Well, I'll be sure not to try it <laughs> myself. Yeah, don't try it. Um we the very next episode we had somebody try their own springtail chow. And uh he said it tastes like feet smell. <laughs> so yeah, not a solid uh Dead. not a solid recommendation. Um, so we're going to bounce. Do you have any parting words of wisdom for us? Anything we you think we missed? Um, I think we just about covered everything. I mean, like you said yourself, um, if you're not a nice buds, get a nice buds. That's the best uh, parting words I got. It's an awesome time. You'll meet some great people in this hobby. So, And it, don't get caught up on the super expensive species either. There are so many great species that are dirt cheap. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, milkbacks. Milk bags mm -hmm. are still one of my go-to, like such entertaining. I don't know why I like them more than zebras because they're the same ice pod technically, but I do. I just like them better. I like the color variation. I like, I think they have more personality. Um, we appreciate you, man is God. And Brandon. You guys are the best. Yeah. Um, I, I do have the best audience, I have to say. You should get involved in it more. I'm just saying, Luke, you should watch videos like them. Whatever, yeah, man. Guys, it does seem like a pretty chill crowd you got you got going here. I, I dig them. I dig them. I, mean, I will say, I, I don't know who quits my channel, but if, you, if you're if you intending to quit my channel, just don't. Just leave it on your feed. Like, whatever. <laughs> Put it on ignore. I don't know. I, I got up to 211 subs, and I was so excited. And then within a day, it dropped to 208, and I was like, why? Oh. Where are you going? Um, <laughs> I get it. I get it. We are a cool bunch of people. We are. Um, you're very welcome. Get into isopods. Yes. Feed them whatever you can find in around your house. Yeah, like fingernails. <laughs> I wonder if they would eat chapstick. I don't know why I keep thinking of weird things to try to feed them, but I'm sure they would if they were hungry. You should try it and uh, let me know. <laughs> Maybe I, I don't know why that came up, but it just came to my head. Like They would eat chapstick, I bet. Or lipstick, like makeup. Um, yeah, I don't know if that'd be good for them, but they might. Yeah, it can't be worse than uh, giving them a Chicago style hot dog. Yeah, apparently think... mustard and onions is bad too. So I didn't realize onions. I've never fed mine onions, but I didn't realize that would be bad. Yeah, I know it's bad for reptiles at least. So uh, and a lot of other but... <laughs> onions is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I didn't think of mustard at all. Ketchup, I know, is just like whatever. My aunts loved it when I gave it to them. They thought it was crazy. It's basically sugar water. So you can feed. The ants will eat anything. So, which is what they're there for. Picnic raiders. Um, but yeah, guys, get out there. Get some ice pods. Go find some in your yard. You don't need to buy them. Yeah, literally. Just go outside. Collect them. Yeah, collect there's them. at least 10 species that live around me. Um, but, uh, you know, Armadillidium vulgaris, the, the top number one which I just found out are invasive technically to America. I actually didn't know that. Um, yeah, don't totally quote me on that, but that was the article that I read is that they're actually invasive. Um, but they're everywhere. They're, they're all across the nation. I don't know about pods. I just don't like the mustard on my dog. 
<laughs> Green Jedi is the one that said don't give him mustard, and it's just because he doesn't like mustard. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brendan is hodgepodge pods. That's who Brendan is. That makes sense. That's why I recognize that name. All right. Never mind. All right, you guys. We're going to peace out. It's been a long one again. But I hope you had a good time. Do you have a good time? Yeah, I did. Thanks for having me on. It was honestly a blast. So I really appreciate you uh, having me on here. It was a good time. Awesome, man. I had a good time having you on. So next week, uh, my phone is on my S pods. I don't know who we have next week but I'm sure it's going to be fun. Uh, look for a link somewhere posted by someone else. Cause I'm still blocked on Facebook. Um, <laughs> but I have some wonderful friends who post links for me <laughs> in their groups. Uh, we have Patreon. We have uh red bubble. If you want to buy merch, it's not very much right now, but I don't make a cent on the merch. It's all 0% profit for me. So you guys could have it cheap. If you want cheaper stickers, we're working on stickers. If you have a good sticker hookup, let me know because I want to make stickers for you people and me mostly. I would um, like some <laughs> just right. saying. I'll just throw them around. I don't care. I want to get stickers out. Like I want to be like Ophi or Rick from Ophi's and just throw stickers at people. Um, yeah, if you want to buy a – let me get this out of here. This is driving me crazy, the reverb. Uh, if you want to buy uh, uh, merch, if you want to buy stuff – let me know. If you want free stuff, let me know. Uh, I don't care. Good night, man. It's God. Yeah, I know. This is the part where I shill everything. Um, we do have one Patreon right now, and they made all of this possible with their one donation. Uh, so, no, that's not true. But we did get into the show, basically. Uh, we got to NARBC, and we got to see some stuff there and make some more content for you. So, final dis disorder. Final disorder for the stickers. Okay. Oh, Brendan's not Hodge. I know Hodgepodge has a different name. He has kind of a unique name. All right, everybody wants free stuff. Yeah, uh, 503 is actually our only Patreon. But there's a lot of options, and uh, we really we put the money to good use. So um, for more, if you like this, if you think it's entertaining, like it helps produce more of these. So uh, And to get better uh, sound, better lighting, which I'm working through uh <laughs> and better guess we have skrillex on here right now what do you what do you think he's over there he's this way um i used to i don't know who called me i used to skrillex but um that was pretty cool I like that was uh that was uh permian exotics that was uh i don't know why i can't think of his name i used to skrillex i'm dead <laughs> you put that on your business cards yeah that's the, the, the isopod skrillex <laughs> Uh, that won't be all right, minute. guys. That was good. That was good. We've got a lot of good, good stuff going on tonight. Skrillex Grismar. Yeah, yeah, because Grismar. Skrillex Grismar. Morris. <laughs> Morris Williamson. Oh, Dude, that's a tattoo. I feel like that's a tattoo or like a super villain. Skrillex poop corns is still the keeper. All right, so the takeaway tonight is poop corns. Poop corns is yeah, please, please, everyone call them poop corns. It made me really happy because if I put them up for sale, I'm gonna put them up as poop corns. I'm gonna label yeah, them as poop corns. 10 plus poop corns. <laughs> I'm giving some away. Do you know Colin from uh Crosstown Exotics? Yes, I do. You're giving them to that's him. That's who's getting, yeah, that's who's getting them. So oh my god, yeah. Um, tell him Luke said they were called poop corns. <laughs> I, I'm gonna label them poop corns and see. Yes, I, told him, yes. uh, I was like, don't buy it. duckies, they suck. So <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm going to hash on duckies later. So, guys, uh, have a good night. Thanks for coming. If you All tuned right. in and you haven't subscribed yet, what's wrong with you? Yeah, it's been an hour and 45 minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> come on. There's more of this coming. So, uh, talk to you later. All right. Peace. All right, thanks for having me.